Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood umbilical surface ulcer. So we're going to discuss managing post-stroke fatigue. I've done a couple of videos recently uh, on post-stroke fatigue. Um, one recently about how long does it last? That was in response to one of my subscribers asking about post-stroke fatigue. So I thought I'd spend some time discussing managing post-stroke fatigue. Because we talk a lot about what post-stroke fatigue is, what causes it, why might you get it, how might it last, when might it have its onset, but we now let's just talk in realistic terms about how to manage it. Now I've left in the description down below the uh, resources. I'm going to go back to that UK document, the PDF, about managing post-stroke fatigue. Also I've got some other information about post-stroke fatigue from a, a couple other sources. So first off, post-stroke fatigue. Again, just going to briefly touch on what it is. Why do you feel so tired? It's a combination of factors from the physical, emotional, um, the neurological, medication. There's so many contributing factors to post-stroke post -stroke fatigue. I'll be honest, the, even the experts don't really know uh, what causes it every time, all time. Right? So you may get it early in your stroke. Like myself, I had it almost immediately. Other people may take weeks or months to develop it. Other people might take months to years to develop it. Uh, Post-stroke fatigue in and of itself could end up being a long-term disability. Um, but let's just talk about how to manage it, right? So first off, and the, what the, this initial piece here I'm going to read to you comes from the UK PDF, right? So you can help manage it. You can't really help make it go away. There's no medication. There's mag no magical medical little fairy dust they can sprinkle on you. So first off, being tired after stroke is extremely common. So remember, it's just not your fault. Like you're tired, you had a stroke, right? Your tiredness, your level of being tired, uh, your level of mental acuity because of that might not be immediately um, visible or understandable to the people around you. So you may have to take the time to explain to the people around you, uh, friends, family, coworkers, maybe your supervisors at work, um, that what you're going through is a side effect of your neurological condition. Right? Um, you may want to show them either the UK document, the PDF, or you may want to show them the fact sheet from Australia. Again, both links are included in the description below. That'll give them a better idea of, of understanding what you may be going through. But I'll be honest, those that are neurotypical, that have never had a stroke or an acquired or traumatic brain injury, they're not going to get it. They just won't. Another thing, time management. Give yourself plenty of time to do a task. Uh, when I was in the military, uh, they taught us how to, when you go to plan a job, you start from the end result and plan backwards. Well, sometimes when you're in that planning phase, you would give a little fudge factor for things. So it might take a little bit longer. So if you ended up not needing the time, you didn't use it. So if you know the next day that you're going to be doing some activities that could be fatiguing, you may want to plan the day out, set an agenda for your day, or set an agenda out for certain portions of your day. So you plan your time more effectively. You might find that that helps you uh, cope, manage the fatigue better. Um, you might want to keep a written diary. I've done that. Uh, when I went back to work, I kept a diary fairly religiously for about the first month and a half because I needed to track my level of anxiety, uh, my fatigue, headaches, my apraxia, my anomia, my um, aphasia, um, my level of tiredness, stress levels. I was trying to track it to, to find benchmarks to see what could set me off, right? What could cause a shit day? What could be done to maybe manage it, right? And just remember, any day can be a good day. Some days will be better days and some days will be just wretched days. So celebrate the great days. So if you're having a day that's a good day, celebrate it. Do something to just commemorate that day. Right? Um, you're not going to forget about the bad days, but it'll help reinforce the fact that today was a good day. Right? Another thing, pace yourself. This is something that took me a while to learn and in some cases I still make this mistake. Pace yourself. Take the breaks. When you notice you're starting to get fatigued, when you get that, that confusion, the brain fog, um, in my case, the anomia, the, uh, the aphasia starts to present. When it gets really bad, I get the apraxia. 
Um, so if you know you're starting to get a bit stressed, uh, if you know you're starting to get a bit stumbly, if you know you're getting a bit fatigued or confused, take a break. That includes napping. So if you have pro post-stroke fatigue, you need to be part of the pro-napping agenda, right? If you need to nap, take a nap, right? It's easier to go to people and admit to them, I'm going to go lie down for a while, and when I wake up, I wake up, or let me sleep for two hours, or whatever the case may be. I've had to do that with people, like, I need to go lie down now. Um, and it's not I'm looking for permission to go lie down. I'm telling you, I need a break. My brain is fucked. I'm going to lie down. I'll be back when I'm ready. Right? Um, so in that case, you want to listen to your body. You want to make sure that as you go throughout your day, and whatever the journey is on that given day, it could be going to the grocery store. It could be going to your doctor. It could be getting on a bus. It could be doing whatever. When you start to feel that need to take a break, to segregate yourself out of the situation that's providing you sort of those, those stressors the, that, that's heightening your fatigue. I've been to birthday parties. Uh, I've been to a buck and doe. Um, I've been to events with uh, friends where there's many people there. It's, yeah, it gets noisy. So when I things get too noisy around me, because since my stroke, I'm very sensitive to ambient noise. Uh, my, I can't concentrate through it. I would just go outside for a break. Um, Historically, before my stroke, I would have gone for smoke breaks because um, people typically don't like it when you smoke in their house. Uh, what I do now is I'm, I'm just going to go outside, take a break. I'm going to go outside, be outside for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just sort of let my brain kind of calm down and, and, and just accept the quiet. And then I'll go back in and re-engage with you. Right? I've, I've had to do that. Um, and it's not that you're trying to be manipulative or demanding. It's, it's something you need. Right? You, you need to do that or I just have to go home. Right? So I'm either going to do this for me, or I'm going to have to go lie down at your house, or I'm just going to have to go home. Okay. Another lesson that I'm still having difficulty learning, you don't have to do all the things. Right. So, like I said before, setting an agenda for your day, just because you've set an agenda doesn't mean that agenda has to be completely finished. Or if you're going to set an agenda, make it reasonable. If before your stroke you were good to do 12 things in a given day, maybe set it for four, right? So set a realistic goal that is realistic and relevant uh, and, and actually achievable to what you're doing that day. Um, so I'm going to admit this. You're going to have to set a slightly lower expectation of how much you're going to be able to successfully accomplish. So you're going to have to go slow. Start out your day slowly, right? find out how much you can do in a day, right? and then stick to it. Um, if you're good for four hours of activity with rests in between, keep going at four hours of activity and then slowly increase that level. Don't expect right after your stroke, mistakenly like I did, that you could almost resume your life immediately like, oh, it's just a stroke, it's no big deal, my brain tried to kill me, I'll just carry on and floor. Right? So that, that's happened to me. Because you're going to start out working out slowly, you're going to take the breaks you need, you're going to take the rest that you need. Maybe you're only good for three hours of activity at a time. Well, in two, three weeks, you might be good for three and a half hours. And then two, three more weeks, you might be good for four hours. And then so on and so on and so on. And eventually you can build up that level of stamina. That's how I did my return to work plan in um, consultation with my therapist and my neurologist, right? So um, that's how I did that, right? So another thing, you might want to start your wind down routine for the day earlier than you might normal uh, in your pre-stroke world. So you might want to start out, if, you're no, if you know you would normally go to bed at 10 o'clock at night, just for sake of argument, you might start your wind down normally at 9.30, but now maybe you might want to start that at 9 or 8.45. Right? You're going to want to try to maintain some level of physical exercise. Like right after, when, after my stroke, I used to go for walks. Um, I don't live too far from a beach, so I would walk down to the beach and go swimming during the summertime. And again, 
this isn't a two or three hour endeavor. It's like, go out for as long as you get to the point where you recognize where you've had enough. Again, going back to that listening to your body, recognizing when things are starting to go down on a downward slope. And then you're just going to separate yourself from that event and then just go home. Eating healthy, right? So here's where you're going to want to make sure you are getting A, the nutrition you need, and B, you're eating healthy. So unfortunately, right after your stroke, you might not be uh, in a position where making your own meals is something that you're able to do, feel comfortable with. So you may find yourself eating out or getting takeaway more often. Well, or you're snacking way too much. You're going to want to make sure that you're getting the right balance. You're going to want to make sure you're getting the right um, amount of food. Now, because of the type of stroke you may have had or the reasons for your stroke, you may need to have your neurologist or general practitioner um, have you referred to a dietitian, and they help develop the correct eating plan for you. And then lastly, you're going to seek support. You can get support from online groups like on Facebook. There's Stroke Talk for Facebook. There's the um, Young Stroke Survivors. There's the, there's the Stroke Coffee House. There are other stroke groups on Facebook. Uh, there may be um, in person, like in, in the area that I live in, there's a Stroke Survivor group on the first th Thursday of every month. And then every Tuesday, there's like a Stroke Walking Group that might be beneficial for you because you'll hear what other people are going through and what they've done to um, help support themselves through their stroke. And you may have some through either your local Heart and Stroke Association or the March of Dimes or a local brain injury association or your general practitioner or your occupational therapist may be able to help you point out where these are and how to access them. Now, another document I found and again, its link is in the description below. This is fighting the stroke, right? One thing, check your meds, right? Everyone after a stroke is on a handful of medication. You're going to want to check your medication to see which one may cause fatigue. Right? You may want to seek out treatment for depression and anxiety because, again, we get another little, do you have depression that has an element of fatigue or do you have fatigue that has an element of depression? So by helping to treat some of the psychological conditions after a stroke, like in my case, I knew the potentiality for post-stroke fatigue uh, was somewhat in my mindset. What I was more worried about was post-stroke anxiety and, and post-stroke fatigue. So I self-referred for counseling because I knew the potential was there. So um, also with getting help with anxiety and depression uh, and or difficulty sleeping, Right? That'll help um, deal with the post-stroke fatigue. You also want to consider setting uh, an effective um, sleep schedule. Getting proper sleep can, it can definitely make a difference. Um, again, we get into their number three point, eat healthy and exercise. You're going to want to talk to your physical therapist. They're going to help you be able to manage issues like walking, balance, proprioception, um, deal with movements and, and those things in and of themselves will be not only physical activity but also help provide you strategies to manage your day in day out to help limit the potential for post-stroke fatigue. Another one, try to schedule physically and or, and or mentally demanding activities in the beginning of the day right? Um, or plan them out specifically with breaks. Because the last thing you want to do is start a task that is um, physically or mentally demanding later in the day, especially right after your stroke. So you're going to want to plan that early in the day. So you get out of the house, you get the activity over with, and you come home, rest, regroup, and do what you need to do. Or if it's a protracted activity, you may want to consider planning, like scheduling breaks. Again, setting that agenda when you go to do the task. And then... One that makes a lot of sense, modify your home and or work environment to be space efficient, right? Uh, you may need to use some adaptive or assistive technologies to make your workspace more efficient. So you're looking at a bit of the occupational um, therapy side, um, help you set up your workspace. You're looking a bit of the, 
the functional side and how you set up your workspace. Um, uh, and ergonomics, you're looking at the ergonomics and maybe you'd throw a little bit of feng shui in there for good measure and you're off to the races. So by setting up your workspace, and that could be your kitchen, that could be your kitchen table, could be your office desk, could be a hobby desk, could be whatever the case may be. Um, probably right after your stroke, it's probably couch and coffee table, let's be honest here. Um, pillow, blanket, snacks, you're good to go. Uh, by setting up your workspace, by scheduling your activities, um, scheduling in rest periods, scheduling your activities at the beginning of a day when they're going to be very physically and mentally demanding, um, making sure that whatever you do, you listen to your body. So if, in my case, bending over can be an unadulterated shit show. Just bending over can, can cause me a high level of dysfunction. Well, I try to limit bending over. Right? If things fall on the floor, I might not go for it immediately because, you know, bending over to tie shoes, not such a fun time. And, you know, you're going to have to adopt a, lower, a slower more methodical, more deliberate, planned out lifestyle. Unfortunately, you're going to have to nap more often. There is there is no magical treatment. There, there is no drug you can be given for post-stroke fatigue. Um, there, is, there isn't any specific treatment you can go to a, a, a medical provider and, and say, hey, I need treatment for this. You can get treatment for the anxiety. You can get treatment for depression. You can get help with uh, dietary nutrition needs. You can get help with effect dealing with effective sleep routines. Yes, some medications may help lessen your anxiety. Some medications may help lessen your depression. Some medications may help you sleep. But ultimately, they're not going to remove the fatigue. You're still going to have the fatigue. I'm 10 months and a couple of weeks post-stroke. I still get fatigued. I've had the fatigue almost immediately since my stroke. The first two months after my stroke, I'm going to be honest, I spent most of that in bed. And some of it because I tried to overdo it and spent a day and a half in bed because I figured, you know what, I'll just motor through. It's just a stroke. What could it possibly do? And I tried to motor through it. So all I can say is when it comes to managing your post-stroke fatigue, Look at the documents that I've included in the list. I'm going to include some some, some tips in the description. Um, and talk with your GP, talk with your neurologist, talk with your physiotherapist, talk with your uh, occupational therapist. Um, if you happen to have a therapist, therapist, or a psychologist, discuss it with them. Post-stroke fatigue can make your rehabilitation and your reintegration into your former life, into your new life, one of the most difficult aspects of having a stroke. I still deal with it day in, day out. Um, some days are drastically easier than others. I still deal with it situation to situation. I still sometimes have to take a step back. I still have to accept the fact that I don't have the same level of function at times that I used to have. I still find it difficult is giving myself permission to have an off day. I still find it difficult to have to depend on people at times to do things that I know 11 months ago I could just effortlessly just do. So don't take it out on yourself. Right? Post-stroke fatigue is a thing. There's nothing you're going to do to change that. The only thing you can do is accept the fact that you have post-stroke fatigue and modify your world to get the best most fulfilling experience you can. And some days, it's going to mean napping, and that's all there is to it. On that note, if you happen to be enjoying what you've been watching over the past 10 months, uh, and you happen to know someone that's had a stroke or supporting someone that's going through their own post-stroke journey, please like, share, subscribe, point the channel out to them. They might get some benefit out of the, some of the content that I produce. Um, if you happen to want to leave a comment down below and, and mention how you deal with your own post-stroke fatigue, please do so. If you want to contact me directly, you can reach me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I say again, you can contact me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. If you want to just have a chat, we can do that. If there's some content or some information you'd like to see me cover, I can definitely produce a video for you if it would be specific and germane to the issues that we deal with here on the channel. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of the stroke, that being someone, someone who appears to be um, having lack of balance, lack of coordination, appears to be immediately uh, befuddled or confused, 
Someone's having vision problems. They can't see out of one eye. They only see in grayscale. They see just a little dot in the world. They can only move their eyes in one direction. They can't move their eyes in another direction. Someone who has facial droop. There's a vis visual noticeable slacking of the facial muscles on one side of the face. Um, someone who ha can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all. Someone who um, has slurred, stuttering speech, or inappropriate word usage for situation or context. Has general body weakness, weakness on one side, or has the inability to stand unaided. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.